you think that you can't go anywhere, can't accomplish much? No. God has big plans for you, and he wants you to dream big. Praise God. Well, let's go right into it. Today's teaching is called Possessing Your Mountain. Now, let's take the Hivites, for example. Let's go to Joshua, please, in Joshua chapter 9. Hivites. Each one of these ites is a different strong man. And it came to pass when all the kings which were on this side of Jordan in the hills and in the valleys and in all the coasts of the great sea over against Lebanon, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites heard thereof that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. So now the enemy is getting together. So now we can't stop him individually. Let's unite. And sometimes the devil gets several forces together because one just won't do it. But he's saying that they are mightier than we are. I'm going somewhere. So now I've got to fight someone that's mightier than me. You got what I'm saying? So God is sending me into the impossible on purpose. Now, why is that? Because faith connects me with the ability of God. So I'm going in here by faith. And I'm going to win. I'm not going to lose. I'm going to take whatever level, because God's got to promote me. He's going to get me in there and promote me. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 25, he said, if you be faithful over a few things, God will make you what? Rule over many things. So he's a promoter. I came here with nothing, but I was faithful in what he gave me. I had 40 members and I was faithful in them. Sometimes people don't want to start with 40. They want to start with 40,000. And that is not the way God works because you got to learn to work with 40 before you work with 40,000. Same thing about a business. He's not going to give you IBM from the start. Now, he may do that. He didn't know what you to do it. But normally, he starts you somewhere in the ranks and moves you up. Because there, you've got to display faithfulness to what he's given you. All right. You're with me. So, high vice. So, come back to Joshua chapter 9. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho at Ai, he just, he just ran through them. They did work willingly and went and made as, it were, at, at, as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their donkeys and wine bottles old and rent and bound up, old shoes and clouded upon their feet, and old garments upon them, and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. So they're looking like they came from a long ways. And they went to Joshua and to the camp of Gilgal and said to him, and to the men of Israel, we be come from a far country. Now, what were they working? Deception. The spirits of Havites are the spirits of deception. They are sent to deceive you. They deceive you somehow. To either get you to not use God's ability and try to use your own or deceive you into going into some kind of uh, uh, unholy alliance or something. Folks, look like I've been through all of it. I'm telling you from experience. Is my shirt torn up in the back? Okay, no, nah, I was just kidding. Okay, so now 
<laughs> I, I saw a man do that one time. He was kind of comical, you know. He's coming out. He said, "Oh, I've been through it, man. I've really been through it." And then the guy said, "He said, let me just take off my coat. It's kind of hot." Took off his coat, and he had nothing but holes in the back of his shirt. <laughs> well, anyway. Deception. Now, what did they do? They made a league with Joshua. He shouldn't have made it. And every one of these ites is a strong man. It's a spirit. All right, let's deal with another one. Jebusites. Now, Jebusites literally means to stomp on. These are spirits that have this mission to prevent people from growing up. One, one man says from getting taller. They are spirits sent to make Others feel small. They talk down at them. They even will tell you to shut up. They concede that other people are nobodies. Now, who had this? How about Gideon? You recall Gideon? These are spirits now to make people feel small. Look what it says in Numbers chapter um, 13 and verse 31. I want you to look at this. I'm just letting you know that all these are in there, making you feel inferior. And they made your on it, see, because it makes them feel taller. But the men that went up with us said, we be not able to go up against these people for they are what? Stronger than we keep going now. This is Israel talking and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched uh, Unto the children of Israel saying the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up its inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it were men of what? great stature and There we saw the giants the sons of Anak, now this is the race that is trying to get, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were we in their sight. Notice, see themselves small. So that's the idea. And so what happens when a person sees themselves small, then they think small. They begin to dream small. Now, one of our speakers said that a dream will produce anything you are believing for. A dream. And how do you dream? And what do you dream? And so there's another spirit called parasites. And the parasites are spirits that make people weak and unable to walk. Now, the word walk in the Old Testament always symbolizes maturity. So what these spirits want you to do with the parasites is not depend on God for yourself, but try to get somebody else to do all your praying for you and look at men more than you look at God. Now, let's just go back to this dream again, because this is a piece that I think I'm going to have to finish up uh, in this area right here. This dreaming, well, let me take a person. When Joseph had a dream, he told it. It wasn't a small dream because these spirits are designed to have you and I to think small. Villagers, some people call them. But they have you to think in a small way 
And it's almost like when you start getting your imagination to rise, these spirits try to close in on you and make you shrink back and keep your imagination small. In your dream is your destiny. Imagination will produce the faith it takes to create that dream. If you can imagine it, remember what he said over in uh, Genesis chapter 11, nothing will be restrained from them which they have what? Imagined to do. If you're going to inherit the world, then you're going to inherit the wealth of it. If your thinking is small, there ain't no way, excuse my English, that you're going to inherit a trillion dollar economy. No way. And the enemy is after you dreaming. See, that starts first out of Acts. Put it up, chapter 26 and verse 19. He said, whereupon King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision that God drops something in your thinking. And he does it on purpose because he's got to get a job done. And the going to come from him. He is the author and finisher of your faith. He is the one that's going to give you the dream. The, the Bible even talks about without a vision, come on, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. That this vision will come from God. And I'm telling you, each one of us has a vision. And when Joseph got that dream and talked about it, his brothers even wanted to wipe him out. And look what God did with Gideon. He came to him and said, Hail, my mighty man of valor. Gideon said, Who, me? <laughs> Who are you talking to? I'm the poorest among this tribe. It doesn't make any difference because once you get born again, you are born of God. You got the same DNA that he's got. Watch it. And he's got a big dream for everybody. So here is Gideon, and Gideon doesn't want to do anything with his dream, and God had to prove him because Gideon fleeced God. Now, don't try to fleece God today because those days are over. It said, God, if you are really speaking to me, then make, when I wake up in the morning, make the ground uh, dry around this and make this thing in the center uh, wet. And he, God did that. Then he came again and fleeced him again. And pretty soon he'd start moving in the things of God. My point to you is, is, is that the same thing happened to this man named Jabez. And if you look at here, it's First Corinth, uh, Chronicles, First Chronicles in chapter 4, it says this in verse 9. This is Jabez. Now, the word Jabez means pain. His mother named him pain. You say, I've seen that before. Folks naming their babies what they're going through. You don't need to name that kid what you're going through. You need to go through it and then name the kid. And my point to you is, come on. You can tell what era somebody get brought up in because they named the kid that. And you know this and that. I ain't going to call no name. But you, some of you can't even pronounce. You're looking at the and paper and I'm trying to pronounce his name. And so I said, where'd they get this from? I almost guarantee it didn't come from heaven. So I said, oh my God, this is something so somebody food. thought of. Something came to my back. But you don't even know what that means. You name your kid something, then that could that could be the worst name so that you I ever gave your kid wow. in somebody else's language. Look what he says here over in uh, Jabez. He said, and Jabez was more honorable than his brother. And his mother wow. called wow. his name wow. Jabez. Saying, because I, I bear child, him with sorrow. And, and Jabez called on the God of Israel, never, ever, saying, ever, ever. Oh, that thou would what? Bless me mean. indeed. And what else? Enlarge my coast. And what else? And that thy hand might be with me. And what else? And that you would keep me from what? Evil. Now check it out. What Jabez was asking for, he wasn't asking God to change his name. He was asking God to change how he saw himself. He was asking God to give him a greater capacity for receiving what he might accomplish on God's behalf. 
He was asking God that things, thoughts were holding him captive and he needed to be released from those thoughts. And this prayer of Jabez, he's saying, give me him a greater ability to think the thoughts of God. Look what God says in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 8. He said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways and your ways and my thoughts and your thoughts. You see, there are spirits that are designed when God wants you to have hair salons all over Chicago, those spirits will make you have do hair in your kitchen. That That is not what God, come on now, instead of, he, you might be teaching school. God didn't want you to teach school. He wanted you to have schools. Okay. My point to you is, it's amazing how we try to bring God's vision down to the level of our small thinking instead of taking our thinking, enlarging it and going up to what God has called us to do. There are so many people sitting in here right now and what has happened is the enemy has shut off your dreamer. He has tried to make you see when any somebody tell you you can't do something, that's when you know you can. Exactly. Amen. Uh, so come true. on. <laughs> it's impossible. And I'm telling you right now, you need to dream again. Martin King said, I have a dream. And because of it, he went to the top of the mountain and affected nations in this mountain. I'm saying the same thing happened to Booker D. Washington. He comes to Tuskegee in Alabama with nothing, had nothing. And he comes there and a picture was taken with him eating lunch in an old wooden church who had a hole in the ceiling. It was raining and somebody was holding an umbrella over his head while he ate. That's where he started in 1885. But by 1905, it is written up that Booker D. Washington graduated out of a slave group of people. He graduated more self-made millionaires than Harvard, Yale, and Princeton combined. The president of Harvard came down over and over again to speak at his commencement. President Roosevelt invited him to the White House and ate with him. And it caused a stir throughout the whole world. Why? Because the world and many people didn't want this group of people to get up off their knees and dream again. But I'm here to tell you, I came through something. And when I came here, oh yeah, I started small, but I started saying Jabez. I began to say this prayer every day, every day. Oh Lord, Bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Keep me from evil. And God began to grow me over and over. And I'm telling you right now, we are worldwide. We're in every continent on the face of this earth. God gave me a scripture. He said, I'm going to have you to take the word of God to the earth as the waters cover the sea. And let me tell you, he's going to protect you in that thing. Now, notice what happened here. I took you back to John, uh, Genesis chapter 20. And in Genesis chapter 20, this is when a man named, a king named uh, uh, Abimelech, he took Sarah, Abraham's wife, in his harem. He's going to take her now. What is he doing? He just, Satan is after that gene pool. So what happened? And it says in verse 3, it says that God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, you are but a dead man. For the woman which you have taken, she is another man's wife. Now what happened then? Abimelech came out of that. He said, get this woman out of here. Now what am I telling you? I'm telling you, you're about to go into the best time of your life. That whatever has been resisting your plan, come on, for God's plan for your life shall be stopped today. Whatever. Now, don't look at me and say, somebody just saying that. No, this is a set time of your deliverance. God has a plan and you are behind his plan. You are late. He's got to catch you up that the enemy has been resisting you with one thing or another. It could be sickness. It could be problems and so forth. But I got news for you. Everything Satan stole from you, this is your year of recompense.
came to her and said, Esther, no, you got to go before the king. Esther said, no, I'm, I haven't been invited. I'm not going there. He said, Esther, you have been called for such a time as this. Esther, you can't miss your calling. There's a timetable we're working here. A oh, wicked Haman has got an ungodly law to kill all the Jews. Esther, we need you, girl. See, you can't look at yourself because now you got the DNA of God. He can dream to you. But what happened? Esther fasted three days. The Bible says she put on a royal apparel. Esther chapter 5. She went in there, went before the king. If the king doesn't point the scepter at you, your head goes off. Because to come into the king, you got to be invited. But the Bible says, for you to come boldly to the throne of grace. And watch this. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. King pointed the scepter at her and said, Esther, tell me what you want. And I will give it to you up to half of my kingdom. You are joint heir with Jesus. Whatever he gets, you got I want you to do something. Drink. Make yourself. 